Okay, great. So before we start, um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your current role? Of course. Yeah, my name is Michaela. I identify as female. I am originally from Italy, and I'm currently a postdoctoral researcher at Facebook AI Research, or FAIR, as we call it, and uh, that is a two-year uh, research scientist-like type mm -hmm. of position where I focus really on academic style of research um, within the larger group. Uh, at Facebook. Awesome. Um, how did you first become interested in AI and at what point did it become kind of a serious career choice for you? Uh, yeah, um, so this happened uh, relati relatively early on in my uh, academic career. This was right before starting my PhD, so straight out of undergrad. Um, I joined what would then become my, um, my research group during my PhD time. Uh, at Yale uh, for this research experience at CERN, which is the um, European organization for nuclear research. And uh, I was in the physics department at the time, but my advisor had some really tight connections with the uh, applied math department. So we had some in-house uh, expertise on neural networks and machine learning uh, and deep learning specifically way before anybody else really in the sciences was, was taking a hard look at that. Um, and that's where it started. Then I uh, spent those five years of my PhD uh, doing AI for uh, mach so machine learning and AI for uh, high energy physics. Uh, and that's really where it all started and then towards the end I feel like I started uh, realizing that I was more interested in these tools, these, these complex systems, these neural networks, and how they really worked at a fundamental level, mm -hmm. more so than the questions that I was answering with them as a tool. Right, right. So that, um, that background in physics, how has it helped shape your work? Uh, a ton, I would say. Uh, certainly it's giving me uh, some mathematical and technical tools to uh, analyze these networks, which mm -hmm. is what I uh, do right now for a living. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, mathematical and statistical tools. Uh, it's, it's really giving me a different way of thinking uh, about AI from a scientific standpoint. So what I do is I, I try to reinterpret neural networks as physical objects and really study their dynamics and that certainly has analogies with the way we uh, think of, of particles and how they interact and the forces that, that cause them to behave a specific way. So uh, definitely it's impacted me a lot and I, and I like circling back all the time to uh, the physics community to be aware of what's happening in there and, uh, and uh, be inspired by the tools and the new insight that they develop. Right, right. Um, so you're currently working as a postdoctoral researcher. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us a little bit more about what that involves? Yes, of course. Uh, so as I said, it's a two-year program. Uh, it's uh, very much like the position of a research scientist, but uh, it's very individual work. So in, in a way, I am um, expected to develop and deliver on my own research agenda and demonstrate that I'm uh, able and capable of doing that. Um, as a junior researcher that hasn't uh, established herself just yet. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's in many ways very similar to a postdoc uh, position in academia, though in some fundamental ways also very different. Mm -hmm. So of course, I um, my job is to publish my research in academic journals and academic conferences and share the code online. Um, but at the same time, we're embedded in this larger firm that has you know both the the privilege and the duty to deliver the highest quality mm -hmm. uh, systems to billions of users and and help them connect and create community so we're constantly reminded of that in our research and so I think that enriches my work and and allows me to be constantly aware of um, of uh, the implications of the research that I do. So it's a really mm -hmm. unique uh, spot to be in. Yeah, right yeah, definitely. Um, <clears throat> and you're also at the Berkeley Lab working predominantly on GANs. Mm -hmm. um, do you find that the two roles intersect and aid each other? Uh, yeah, certainly. Um, well, I have to say, right now I'm mostly 99% a fair and 1% mm -hmm. a Berkeley Lab. But again, I, I like to remain up to speed with what's happening in the sciences because mm -hmm. um, I think it, it does help me uh, ground my research in real world applications. So understanding what uh, the challenges that arise in the sciences and uh, what the unique data set features might uh, possibly be 
helps me inform my own research at the moment at FAIR um, and understand, like, again, how to make it more relevant and uh, more impactful to a broader community beyond just the uh, simple academic uh, data sets and tasks that we might be uh, tackling uh, within the AI community. So uh, there's certainly that. And then, of course, uh, I'm <laughs> passionate about science and really the big picture of discovering how the world uh, works. Um, so. Yeah. Good to do that with AI. Yeah. Um, what does a typical week look like for you? What do you spend your time doing? Uh, so that really uh, depends on the stage of the projects that I'm involved in. Mm -hmm. So in the early stages, there's a lot of reading papers and brainstormings and meetings uh, to really narrow down the research questions that we want to be uh, asking and answering. Mm -hmm. And then there is, uh, you know, the majority of uh, the time spent on a project would involve me directly coding up uh, uh, experiments to test our hypotheses to collect experimental evidence in favor or against it and and then there's a maybe more exciting part for me which is like the writing up of uh, these research findings to be able to communicate them to the rest of the community um, and then you know hopefully travel around the world to institutions or uh, or conferences to be able to uh, explain our results to the mm -hmm. rest of the world so it varies yeah yeah um, are there any projects that you're working on at the moment um, that you're particularly passionate or excited about? Absolutely. I mean, there's so many projects, so few hours in the day, a few uh, days in the week. Uh, there's, uh, yeah, I'm primarily working right now around uh, neural network pruning, mm. uh, so model compression, uh, but I'm looking at it again from a scientific standpoint. Mm -hmm. uh, so I am uh, using pruning as, a, as an engineering intervention, as a tool to go from this over-parameterized regime where we have these enormous neural networks uh, that train really well and are even able to generalize really well um, and look at how they behave as the number of connection gets mm -hmm. reduced so under this constraint. Mm -hmm. And then there are really important implications around that as well because as we said it's, it's a, a decision that we make as engineers to um, to compress our models, but how do those changes in the dynamics of how the network evolves over time actually affect changes in, uh, you know, to the end users that uh, will be on the receiving end of a compressed model? How does mm -hmm. that affect some uh, fairness and bias considerations? Mm -hmm. So that's something else that I'm looking into these days. Yeah. Um, and are there any challenges that you're currently facing in your work that you can talk about? Uh, again, uh, I just wish I had more hours because some of these questions really do keep me up at night. Mm -hmm. I'm really passionate about them, but, you know, not enough collaborators, not enough time all the time so uh, that's that's always a big challenge that mm -hmm. I think researchers face yeah. um, and then uh, beyond that I again I come from a different field so uh, stepping into one of the you know most prestigious AI labs uh, sort of as an outsider as a very junior person uh, was certainly a challenge it was mm -hmm. uh, a pretty uh, tough transition, maybe harder than I had expected. Um, and then uh, the type of research that I do is scientific in nature, so that usually requires uh, you know, big investments and the type of uh, structure and even a change in mentality sometimes uh, in the community that I'm not always sure that the AI field is, is, is ready to, to undertake. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm actually just curious myself, um, you know, AI obviously is, can be quite a homogenous field that times in terms of the people working in it. Yes. Um, are there any tactics that you think have worked well or could work well for increasing representation in the field? Um, yeah. That's a million dollar question. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm personally very involved in trying to ameliorate the situation at the moment. So mm -hmm. I, this year I was one of the organizers of the Women in Machine Learning Workshop. Mm -hmm. And I think just that, that's, you know, just a stepping stone, but uh, it's, you know, step zero in engaging more women from very junior levels and, and giving them the opportunities that they might not have otherwise to travel to an international conference like New Rips and having, uh, receiving mm -hmm. feedback on their research from some of the top researchers in the world. Uh, that's, you know, something that I oftentimes take for granted because that's always been given to me, but, but that's absolutely not the standard for most amazing researchers out there. Um, beyond that, of course, uh, 
I, I'm not an expert to comment on hiring practices necessarily, but again, the uh, diverse slate approach that, for example, Facebook is taking has been shown uh, to really improve uh, the, the statistics, but really, it's not just about attracting talent, it's mm -hmm. also about retaining talent, so it's yeah. diversity and inclusion, yeah. and so that really comes down to every day creating an environment where people can uh, feel appreciated and mm -hmm. can feel like they belong and they have uh, the right to be there and then do what they do without yeah. spending half of their mental uh, you know, capacity yeah. worrying about how they're perceived and, and how to fit in. Yep, yep, that's something I've, I've heard a lot. It's yeah, important sure. to, yeah, and have role models in the field as well. Yes, so. exactly, yeah. totally. Yeah. Um, great, and what does 2020 look like for you? Uh, really busy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, lots of great conferences coming up, uh, lots of ideas again, but, but also very exciting. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be a bit of a pivotal year for me. So as I mentioned, this postdoctoral position is just mm -hmm. two years long, and I'm now maybe a year and a few months into uh, into this position. So mm -hmm. eventually, I'll be looking for for full time positions, and I think you know that. Uh, can really bring upon uh, quite a lot of uh, mm -hmm. quite a bit of change, uh, mm -hmm. both from a personal and a professional standpoint. Yeah. But also, uh, it's a new challenge that I'm really excited about, and uh, I'll you know be looking for uh, more opportunities to continue pursuing the research that I'm interested in, mm -hmm. while you know learning more about uh, leadership and vision, and also mentorship and and management in this field, and uh, see how I can contribute next. Awesome. Sounds very exciting. Um, and where can we keep up with your work? Um, probably on Twitter. That's mm -hmm. the best way. At Wonder Mickey, M-I-C-K-Y. Uh, that's usually where I post all of the updates on the papers that I publish. Uh, mm -hmm. Those are also available in archive. Um, and then, you know, links to my GitHub contributions as well. I think that's where. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kayla. Absolutely. Really appreciate it. Thank you. It was great. my pleasure. Yeah.